Hello everybody, I'm Caleb Cooper. Now, um, welcome to my barn. Come with me. Watch the hole, that's my drainage hole. So last week, well, last week we had about eight inches of rain in the space of like two weeks, I think. So that cleared all the rain out of uh, this barn. Didn't it, Jess? That's Jess. And then we've got beef cattle here and a few pigs. So these are Oxford Sandy and Black Pigs on the right hand side here. So fingers crossed they're in pig to, to some babies. And then we've got a few mixed, uh, mixed breed of cattle. So for example, this one here with a white face is a Hereford Cross. And then we've got an Angus here, um, as well as that, another Hereford Cross. Um, they're actually, our, actually all in here, Hereford Crosses and Angus. So um, there's 12 in here, which I then rear up from babies to go into the food chain. I mean, that one there was born the sixth of the, the fourth. So what are they, nearly six months, aren't they? Weirdly, these cows have got a passport and I haven't. That's actually got a passport before me. So every cow alive has to have a passport um, and basically an identification number. So this one here is 405, 208. That'll tell you what farm it come from, the age of the cow and so on. Yeah, these ones here have got their, their date of birth as well as what they are basically, so like a Hereford cross. So each pig have got a tag. So this one here has got a yellow tag here. Again, identification, which basically gives us a, a herd mark. So we have a herd name here and then that is our pig. So if it ever gets out, they go right, they can trace that pig back to here. These are mine, these ones are. So I've got two, Jeremy's got, he's got four breeds. I was no, sorry, six, sorry, because he's got two that he kept from last time. So he's got six and I've got two. Um, I've always had pigs since I was a kid. Honestly, they're really intelligent. Piggies! Solid. So like Dwayne The Rock Johnson on all fours with a bit more hair, isn't it? Hey? Every farmer cares about their animals. I've not met one farmer that doesn't care. I mean, here's only four and a half acres with an acre of wood. And I mean, I'm farming it as much as I can, but my limits really, I can't really have any more than this and, and so on. So hopefully one day I'll be able to buy a bigger farm, you know, 150 acres, something like that, 200 acres. And... I mean, if I, the tip that I give in terms of your food and security of your food is always, always buy local. I mean, for example, I know my eggs come from here, I know my pork comes from here, I know where my, my honey comes from. And of course, if you've got hay fever, the best thing to do is go and find some locally sourced honey and have a spoonful a day. Guarantee it will cure your hay fever. Um, but yeah, in terms, of, in terms of health, I think the best thing to go and do is buy local and know where your food comes from. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, we're going to Bahamas. I think, I think that's probably the agreement. I think the first time we go abroad, if we don't go beforehand, would be would be the honeymoon. So I think it'd be Bahamas or something. I think Taylor's we've dreamt of going on um, honeymoon to the Bahamas and sitting on. I think she once said she wants to swim with pigs. I'm like, well, we can do that here. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> and I'm not, no, no, definitely not. And I'm not a massive swimmer, to be honest. I don't like swimming. I'm not designed to go into water. If I had gills, I'd be designed to go into water, but I haven't got gills. So it's like flying. I haven't got wings, I wouldn't fly. Yeah, they're great. I mean, they're typical far feral farm kids. I mean, Oscar went through a phase of sna um, smashing TVs. He smashed three in like a week. Well, it was, the first one was an accident. It was playing with a little little baseball bat thing, and I think he swung. I think actually, to be fair, Taylor didn't tell me, but I think it is actually Taylor that did it. But I think she's blaming Oscar. They're playing together. <laughs> but um, uh, and then the second time we were, we were having steak, and he likes hitting the meat, you know, just to tender it out and so on. And I left him with the hammer, and he walked into the living room. And I kid you not, as I walked around to see where he is, he looked at me like this, looked back at the TV, back to me, and then just hit the TV and smashed it, um, which on that occasion, instead of shout, you can't shout at these kids. I mean, he's three, he doesn't understand what's good and what's not and so on. So I sat him on my lap and I got my phone out with the online banking and I moved 750 pounds from his bank account to my bank account and paid for the new TV. That's what mattered it. And after I did that, he went, oh, <laughs> did it again. He did exactly the same thing. And now he's realizing that he stopped taking, uh, sorry, he stopped breaking TVs now. Oh, it's no money, mine, but. <laughs> One of the weirdest fan interactions, good one. Um, someone showed me their, I don't know if I say boobs. Boobs, someone showed me their boobs once. So I was in a tractor and they just went um, and flashed me completely. Um, and then after that, we had a selfie together and she pointed out her husband that who was taking the picture of us, which is very awkward. I didn't know what to say, I just said, nice one, mate, or something like that, I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, grand tour? That's a good question. Depends. What occasion? Morning or night? Breakfast fried. Ketchup. Only because I've got sugar at the moment and it's got a lot of sugar in and I can taste the sugar now and it's amazing. It's amazing. 
No, it's amazingly good. It tastes amazing. <laughs> I like a roast, just a traditional roast. Yeah. Got to have a Yorkshire pudding. Oh, In what way? To work with? To have as a friend and then to work with. Oh, I'm going to get like, I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, to have as a friend, I would say Jeremy because we're, we're really good friends anyway and we're the same humour and so on. To work with Lisa, she's more practical. Um, but yeah, to, I mean to have as a friend, me, me and Jeremy, like, we're already friends anyway and we spend a lot more time together. Than... But don't worry Lisa, I do love you and so on. <laughs> yeah, I understand, I think it's his baby, isn't it? Grand Tour's his baby and he does a lot of writing for him and so on. Um, so I think, um, yeah, he can sit back and relax a little bit. Of course, I think he's a bit upset about obviously giving that up and it was an emotional time obviously listening to the last the last uh, the last show but at the same time I think he's he's happy where he is and I think he can step back up doing that and then more on the farm. Uh, I like the rump steak. Uh, on a sheep I love the leg. On a chicken I love the wings and the and the um, the legs because I think they move the most and they taste the taste the best. Um, on a on a on a I, mean, I like pork chops. But I actually prefer a belly pork is always really good. Belly pork's nice. Ted is this thing called an under roast. You ever heard of it? So I think it's a Cornish thing. Um, but basically you have, a, you have a, a dish. You put your pork belly in, your potatoes in, you fill it with gravy, put it in the oven, that cooks that, and then you do your, your carrot veg in that a lot, and then it tastes really good. And then of course you've got your gravy there made and you just pour it over your vegetables with your, with your meat in there. It's really nice. I want to say both, but it's really, it's really, good, it's really tricky because they've got, both got different like accomplishments in a way. Like for example, muck spreading is so therapeutic. For example, you get a pile of muck, you spread it over that, and it's improving the soil's health and so on. But at the same time, drilling is knowing that in the back of your head you go right, that's going to be a crop next year. And ah, oh, um, muck spreading, I do a lot of it. I can't decide that. I can't. I literally, I like, I like both. I was always, I was always told as a young kid, this guy with Robin who used to speak like this, howdy doody and all this stuff, he's a great guy. He said, okay, but just remember, you can't farm without an arable. I never knew what he meant until I went out there and started arable farming and then realized actually the soil needs this lot here to do what they do and then put the nutrients back on the soil and so on. Actually get a much better crop for next year and the soil health is much better. And basically what you're doing when you're putting that muck on the field is you're feeding the worms. Then worms come up, they grab it and they take it down and they actually make the proper soil for you. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can't decide between the both. I mean, if I had to do it day to day, it's a different time. In the winter, I like, I like livestock farming because I'm more busy on that. For the summer, I love being out in the, out in the fields with an arable farmer. It's hard. <laughs>